Hello, fellow memers. I'm Lauren Shippen, professional writer and Tumblr user who craves that mineral. And I'm Cherokee McAnally, head of entertainment at Tumblr and serial reblogger. And this is Dashboard Diaries, a podcast for you, the folks who are in this internet bunker with us. We talk about what's going on on our favorite hell site, get into what we like to call tumble lore, do phantom deep dives, and share the times when we went feral over a ship. Cherokee, what has your last week on Tumblr been like? Lauren, it has been a week. Yeah? It, uh, I mean, I don't know where to start with HBO Max. Do I start with oh, The God, Sandman? Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to start with The Sandman because that's fun and exciting. So The Sandman premiered at midnight last night. I have, I will admit, I haven't watched the first episode yet, but I'm very excited to. And obviously it has been the moment on Tumblr, the thing, uh, the past few days. And we did a little exclusive kind of, uh, content drop on the Netflix Tumblr with a scene from the Sandman, which was like one of the most popular scenes from, from the comics or from the graphic novel. And also, uh, a couple of, uh, exclusive photos from from the show before before it premiered, and for one one of the posts because I was getting drafted on the Netflix Tumblr and like thinking of some fun copy, and I had been joking around at, for some reason and singing the Mr. Sandman song, but saying just Mr. Sandman make me a sand, and I didn't realize <laughs> that there was the Mr. Sandman man me a sand meme, which our wonderful head of editorial uh, Kate's Holderness who is the host of Big Week on Tumblr podcast, reminded me of because she's a huge Sandman fan. So I posted the post with Mr. Sandman, make me a sand. And all of the tags and comments were like, "Uh, this is not the meme. What are you talking about? Like, this is such a fail. And I was like, well, okay, well, I just found out about the meme. Actually, I made my own, but (laughs) I'll add in the man, me a sand. So I changed like changed the post to man, me a sand and Neil Gaiman reblogged it. And the caption was like, I'm not reblogging this. So that was, I think the, you know, one of the biggest moments of the week on Tumblr was, you know, discovering the Mr. Sandman, man, me a sand meme. And also, you know, the whole Neil Gaiman reblog. It was just a fun, fun little evening and uh, excited. Yeah. Excited to watch the show now. Wow. That is a, 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 a cascade of like classic Tumblr experiences, right? Posting a meme, getting dunked on for posting the meme wrong, <laughs> fixing the post, and and you know who knows what version of it's going to be reblogged, right? Is it going to be the the correct yeah. version? Is it going to be the first version <laughs> or the remixed version, as I like to call it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> memes are ever changing. That's the whole point exactly. of memes, right? <laughs> is that they they morph. But then also Neil Gaiman, who we haven't talked about on the show yet, but who is like one of the I would say one of the most prolific real people on Tumblr. Yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better word. <laughs> he I I would say is one of Tumblr's like unofficial official ambassadors, but also mm-hmm. parents and also I don't I don't know. He is everything to a lot of Tumblr fandoms and communities. And I just love the way that Neil Gaiman, you know, engages on Tumblr. I think one year we counted how many asks he answered and it was over 1,000 in a year. Oh my he gosh. He answers asks on a regular basis. Um, his Tumblr is neil-gaiman.tumblr.com for all of those following along. Check out some of his asks. And yeah, he's so much fun. Uh, and yeah, it was really exciting to kind of see his, you know, little comment. And, and so the thing is, I had joked to Kate's already and said, you know, shared the Mr. Sandman, make me a sand. And she said, you know, this is so funny because of this meme and sent the meme to me. And I was like, should I change the copy or is that too inside baseball on a meme? And you know what? The answer on Tumblr is it's never too inside baseball. It really isn't. (laughs) Yeah, it was a good, good fun day on Tumblr. Super excited to watch the Sandman now. Uh, People are stoked about it. And apparently, yeah, it's like really just so accurate to the to the graphic novels that, you know, people are be excited. How about you? What were you up to on Tumblr this week? Well, funnily, just sort of thinking about um, or, or rather talking about the unique quality of Tumblr. Today, we're going to kind of be jumping into some Tumblr basics in our main topic. And so I feel like talking about this right now is is sort of tied into that, which is the fact that when you write a post, if you edit it after the fact, any of the reblogs that occurred before you edited it are still 
out there. And so, you know, sometimes there will be multiple versions of a post going around because the old reblogs are reflective of a previous version of the post. And it's kind of this like wonderful feature of Tumblr where you are able to edit things, unlike something like Twitter, let's say. But you have to just like ha have all of your versions there for the world to see, even if people reblog it. And that's true even if you delete a post as well. <laughs> if it's been reblogged, it's there forever, which I genuinely really love. And something that, that has been a part of my week on Tumblr for the last, I don't know, several months, it feels like. Yeah, May 14th was when I originally posted this. I, I wrote a post on May 14th that you might have seen because it has almost 40,000 notes, which is my most popular post by far. Oh my and gosh. the post is leaving kudos on AO3 isn't enough. I need to be able to eat the fic, <laughs> which is a thing that if you read fanfic, you're going to understand. And if you don't, we don't have time to get into it. But what's so interesting about this post that sort of ties back into into what we're talking about is that, you know, this is this is just like an expression of the way that I feel when I really, really love a, of a, a fic because you can only leave kudos once and like you know you can only comment so many times and you, sometimes you just want to be able to consume a fic right you, you get it we, we're all on the same page here but so many people have been reblogging this and talking about like oh my god just leave a comment just leave a comment just leave a comment despite the fact that like almost instantly after i posted this post i reblogged my own post with the addendum of like just before anybody says anything like i am leaving comments that's not what this is about like i do leave comments that basically say this on fix and it just, of course, that's the version that, like, is not getting passed around, right? And so I think that that's, that's a very interesting example of how, like, when you post something and it goes viral for whatever reason, it just is out there without context or without, you know, your edits or whatever it is. And um, I think that that's, I think that's kind of fun that adds into the chaotic energy of Tumblr. I, yeah, could not agree more. I think, I think it's really beautiful that, yeah, you're, uh, you can update, you can fix your mistakes, but they still exist. How, uh, yeah, how yeah. relevant to the real world, you know, but on our special little, there's a history of everything. I'm going too deep with this, Lauren. I think you should stop me. I'm gone full no, zen. I love it. <laughs> Tumblr philosophy. Let's go. <laughs> All right, now before we get into our main segment for the week, we have a couple of updates from last week. Three updates, actually, I have for you, Cherokee. The Ooh. first came to me very recently, and it's less of an update on, on last episode and more of just an update personally for you, which is that there was a Twitter thread, which I will send you later, talking about Jeremy Allen White's costuming in The Bear and, and the very specific t-shirts that he wore, and they did raise the hem of his sleeves to show more bicep. I just thought that was important information for you to have. You're welcome. And the pot. I'm good. That's good. I think we're covered. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I just, yeah. good, you know, good on the costume design team. Good on everyone who had Absolutely. anything to do with that. I mean, wow. Just, yeah, big sigh <laughs> for for them. They're just, they're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> doing the Lord's work. The second update I have for you is a clarification, or I guess an addendum to something that we talked about last time um, as related to the John Locke conspiracy. This was pointed out by a listener of ours that the Lost Special conspiracy, the, the one that I talked about, about the secret finale, was actually a bit of a conspiracy nesting doll situation, and that it was a smaller group within the John Locke conspiracy called Tinfoil Hat Conspiracy. And that's as much information as I have because trying to search TFHC on Tumblr just brings up The Foxhole Court, which is this book series that we will talk about at some point because it had a very interesting moment on Tumblr. So if you know more about the Tinfoil Hat Conspiracy, please come to our Ask Box and, and or email and uh, let us know how that conspiracy within a conspiracy worked because I'm very curious now. There's a journey there that we could go on. There definitely yeah. <laughs> is a journey for sure. And the final update on something we talked about uh, last time is, uh, I think, one of my favorite emails that I've ever received, which is from a listener named Mackenzie. And Mackenzie had some insight into our question around if anybody out there had read every Destiel fic on AO3, because there's 100,000 Destiel fics, and we, you know, we thought, 
some, surely somebody out there must have read all of them. But Mackenzie did the math. And I'm just going to read this email in its entirety because it's amazing. You asked if anyone had read all of Destiel fan fiction, and I'm here to tell you that it is physically impossible. After estimating the average length of a Destiel fic and multiplying that by the number of Destiel fics on AO3, it comes to 1,171,662,455 words. This would be like reading The Lord of the Rings, including The Hobbit and The Twilight series, 1,000 times, which is about six years and ten months worth of reading. This means that if someone read Destiel fic 12 hours a day, every day, since Castiel was introduced as a character less than 14 years ago, they would almost be caught up. Of course, if you include all Supernatural and RPF fic, the total reading time is 18 years, 10 months, which is longer than the show has existed. Okay, who's taking one for the team? <laughs> Who's going to spend the next six years <laughs> reading Death Yelping every day for 12 hours a day? We have the technology. We can do this. <laughs> but just, Mackenzie, I, I already sent you an email thanking you, but oh my God, you are a genius. This is just incredible mathematics work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unbelievable stats. I'm I'm speechless, honestly. <laughs> and I just... You know, I just hope someone one day can achieve that. But here's the thing. Uh, Destiel fanfic is, I would say, maybe only increasing, honestly, in volume uh, exponentially by the day. It is a little bit like a production line that never ends, right? You you, you are packaging these yeah. things in a production line and just more and more keeps coming. So it might actually be impossible to go through life and read every Destiel fic in, ever. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. <laughs> It's important for us to have goals. Exactly. And this is one of mine now. <laughs> Speaking of, Cherokee, do you have a supernatural update for us? Absolutely, I do. Uh, so I watched season one, episode two on my journey of uh, watching all of Supernatural. Maybe by the time I finish the 15th season of Supernatural, someone listening will have read every supernatural fic. It is now a race. Let's go. This episode, uh, Wendigo, I believe it was, it was mm -hmm. called. Um, so I just kind of, once again, bulleted out my thoughts. <laughs> the first sentence is, Big Bear Spirit. This reminds me of Alone, my current fave. Any Aloners out there? Season 9 finale of Alone coming up. My Blorbo is the Moss guy from Alone. <laughs> and then I realized I'd written like three sentences, nothing to do with <laughs> Supernatural. Alone is great, though. Oh, yeah. Alone, I am a huge fan. Season 9 also is crushing it right now. But, yeah, so I continued I continued on my Supernatural journey after that, you know, that slight veer, veer off the Impala, you know, got back on track. And <laughs> I, uh, my next thing that I wrote was like, oh, they're so young. I feel like I've seen Dean and Sam grow up on Tumblr just by scrolling throughout the years. So, you know, that was my next thought. And then for some reason I wrote, this demon's name is George, vibe-wise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I'm unsure. Uh, the demon, I don't know if you watched Midnight Mass. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the demon from Midnight Mass really looked like the demon from this episode. And for some reason, I was just like watching like the, de like they see the demon near the end of the episode after like not really knowing what it looks like. And for some reason, my brain was like, hmm, George. So I do think from now on, I will also be naming the demons in each episode, just vibe wise. Okay, a funny, a funny, uh, like cross fandom thing that you created without even knowing it is that in the CBS slash Paramount Plus TV show Evil, which is phenomenal, there is a demon named George. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, so tied into fandom that, you know, even without knowing, is this web weaving? Is that what's happening right now? Sure. <laughs> Finally, I said, when does Kaz arrive? And my final bullet point is really unsure how I never realized that the Impala was black. <laughs> <laughs> Beige B is something that's going to stay with me forever. Beige B haunts my dream. Beige B is my sleep paralysis demon, along with <laughs> now George. <laughs> Who is in evil one of the characters' sleep paralysis demons. No! Oh my I, gosh. I have to send. He's a sleep paralysis <laughs> demon slash like narrator for the first season or so. It's a very goofy, weird, scary, sexy show that I that like, defies description. Um and I will I will send you I'll I will try to find a gift set of of George and send it to you because he's a delight. All right, and our main topic today is Tumblr terms, because we realized this is our third episode, and 
for most of you listening so far, I think uh, most of you are Tumblr users, but we don't want to be exclusionary to people who don't, don't use Tumblr. And so we thought it might be good to dive into some basic Tumblr terms and to find them for each other, see if we have the same definitions <laughs> for some of these, and and give those of you out there who are not as familiar with Tumblr culture a, a rundown of the the terms and ideas that you need to know in order to find your way through this this crazy little hell site of ours. Also, I came up with a punny name for the segment, folks. <laughs> the Fan Dictionary. <laughs> I like it. I like it. The, the first letter, A, is for aesthetic. So aesthetics, I'm sure you've heard this word outside of Tumblr. Of course, it is not a Tumblr specific word, but aesthetics are a very big kind of popular, I don't know, I would say theme on Tumblr. They're essentially like the vibe of a certain, like a given space, like cottagecore is the aesthetic Mm -hmm. that you would be most familiar with. And cottagecore is very much like the kind of aesthetic or look and feel uh, or kind of overall vibe of being in a cottage. So you're standing in the middle of a field with, you know, flowers and edward cullen cottage core and also (laughs) vampire core there's there can be multiple cores per core and it's also uh, a big part of aesthetics that i have noticed is it's not just like the overall vibe but it's kind of like entering into like what it would be like to you know enter or be in that space like goblin core is like oh i want to be like under this mushroom eating a handful of moss (laughs) <laughs> Hashtag goblin core. You can basically add core onto any word and have an aesthetic. That's basically how it works. Goblin core, vampire core, Cherokee core, Lauren core. There's core core even. I've never heard of core core. What is core core? Core core is the aesthetic of aesthetic. We might need a whole episode on that alone. A, a, a term that we've been using a lot in the show so far that is relatively new to Tumblr terminology to this fan dictionary is Blorbo. And we will reblog the original post from whence Blorbo comes. Um, but basically a Blorbo is just a, a favorite beloved character. And actually, funnily enough, I have a tag on my personal Tumblr that's Blorbo Core, where I just like reblog posts that are like vague themes around characters that I love. <laughs> And that's my Blorbo core. And dashboard is the the ho- the Tumblr homepage, which we all know and love and scroll through. And you can have it chrono. That's, I believe, the default. We stay chrono folks on Tumblr. Oh, yeah. You can set it to kind of most, you know, you know, popular posts first. Now, here's a question. Do you are, well, two questions, actually, with your dashboard scrolling. Are you a mobile user or a desktop user? It really depends. I started on Tumblr as a desktop user. I was more often than not scrolling while I was uh, in class in college, as one does. But, you know, Tumblr University, folks, it's a thing. (laughs) We all attended it. Oh, yeah. I still vibe more with the dashboard desktop experience, but I find myself using mobile a lot because if I'm like watching a show or something, I will go search the tag and kind of scroll through the tag while watching. How about you, Lauren? I mean, I'm pretty much the same. I'm, I am uh, through and through a desktop user, although sometimes, yes, I will like scroll the tag of a show that I'm currently watching. I use mobile for like messaging and and my notifications and stuff as well. But the the thing about about the way that I approach my dashboard on de- desktop is that I don't have endless scroll turned on, and so my dashboard is just it stops and then goes to next page, previous page, which is a setting that I believe you have to turn on because most people endless scroll. And that's so that I can catch up with every post on my dashboard because I'm nuts, I guess. Um, So currently I think I am looking at my dash. I've been looking at my dashboard from um, July 29th. So I'm not so, so far behind, but I literally just keep the tab open until I'm caught up on the last post that I saw. And I'm usually like a week behind. (laughs) You're my favorite person. That's amazing. And that's also how I, when I first started using Tumblr, that's how I used it. And now I just follow so many blogs, but I, it was honestly, it's so much fun to get to that most recent post and be like, yes, I have seen, I have seen 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 every meme. Up next, we have OP, which is original poster. I believe, and that is uh, the one who posted something first, which as we were chatting about earlier, how posts can be edited and changed around, often an important uh, important part of things on, on this lovely hell site we call Tumblr. OTP, totally different, 
uh, more of a, a ship and fanfic thing. Um, it stands for One True Pairing. It's basically your, your ship to end all ships. There's also Bro TP, which is an OTP, but platonically. And OT3, which is a One True Pairing, but it's not a pairing, it's three people. So that's the, that's the variety of OTP terms. Wow, I love that. And OT3 is definitely, I'm glad, I'm glad I know that exists. Brief tags is essentially uh, what someone is saying when they are like resharing or reblogging a post with like the previous tags, um, but also like looking at the previous tags in a post, which also now we have made easier on Tumblr. When you look at the notes on a post, you can click and you can see, you can choose to see comments or comments and tags or like just the tags because we know there's just so much in those brief tags. There's so much in those brief tags. The thing that, that drives me nuts is when people reblog something and they go like brief, 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 brief to be like, go back, like, you know, the chain of six reblogs to see. No, that's the point where you screenshot the tags and you add it as a comment on the post. That's the peer review process. Brief tags, in my opinion, <laughs> I feel very strongly about this, is to respond to the person you were, you were directly reblogging from. And that is it. <laughs> Q is a a queue not just the letter but like to to line up in a queue it's essentially your 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 queue of posts you can queue posts on tumblr which is something that is unique to Tumblr. like there's no other social media site that has this and it is my favorite thing my queue is always like hundreds of posts long and it's just so that you know you can space out your posts um and it's the best yeah I'm a big Q fan because I feel like when I do go on Tumblr, it's, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of just scrolling and just wanting to reblog everything. And then maybe I don't, you know, exactly. do that, like something like that, you know, deep of a dive for the next few days or so. So it's great to have your posts queued on up because then your followers aren't like, okay, she was clearly <laughs> having a moment between 11, 11 PM and 1 AM. Uh, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, look at her. She's so active on, on Tumblr, but at a reasonable spaced out pace. <laughs> It's she so isn't true. weird about this at all. <laughs> yeah, it's really great for when you don't want to be like reblogging a million posts of the fandom that you're going feral over all at once. Um, and a lot of people also have like cute tags for their Q posts so that they differentiate between the posts when they're like active online versus posts that they've queued. Um, I don't because I live chaotically when my tag system. <laughs> So I just don't tag my cue. <laughs> Wouldst thou like to live chaotically? Uh, <laughs> I also do the same. I don't, I do love looking at everyone's adorable little cue tags. They're like, thank you. Or like thinking of cue. And I'm like, oh, that's, thank you. <laughs> I, of course, follow a lot of people who um, have their cue tag as um, I'm with Q till the end of the line, which is a, a, a stucky quote, just swapping out you for Q. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I can't wait to see all the prev prev tags of the cues in the reblogs, which is our next word, folks. Reblog. <laughs> if uh if if you haven't been on Tumblr before, a reblog is essentially uh resharing a post. So it is a big way that people engage on Tumblr, use Tumblr. I, for example, am a big reblogger. I've reblogged over fifty thousand things in my in my years uh, on, on this wonderful website. And so yeah, reblog is essentially resharing. Um, and it is very, I would say, uh, gratuitously used. You know, no, you know, it's not. You know, people will reblog twenty or thirty things or queue them up. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's definitely like. People, people share, will reblog a lot of things. It's not like ever so often. Uh, well, it is for some people. You know, some people are lighter rebloggers, so I don't want to yeah. uh, project my, my reblog style on, on everyone. Well, I'm curious. Have you seen the discourse on Tumblr around the reblogs versus likes that has been happening recently? I don't think so. So this has crossed my dash from a couple different sources and in a, in a couple of different ways, which is essentially that... Tumblr has been getting a new influx of users, right? Which is amazing. We are so happy that that more people are joining this website. I say that like I work for Tumblr. I'm just happy that more people are using this website. <laughs> I don't work for Tumblr. Oh my um, gosh. We're, excuse me, we're here on the unofficial official Tumblr podcast, Lauren. <laughs> you work with us. That's true. I'm a, I'm a friend. I'm a friend yes. of Tumblr. <laughs> um, but there's there's been, I think, a lot of folks, supposedly, at least anecdotally, um, that have come to Tumblr from TikTok. 
And part of the, the, I guess, the supporting evidence for this being the case, like this being the specific place that users are coming from, is the fact that increasingly there are a lot of posts that are censoring words. And so, you know, someone will post something and tag it with like the word kill and the I and kill will be an exclamation point because you're not allowed to do that kind of stuff on TikTok. And that in of itself is a problem because people filter out tags, you know, for reasons. And so you do need to tag things with content warnings that are where the content warning is spelled out correctly. So yeah, that's like one of the habits that's been happening on on Tumblr that people have have been thinking is coming over from TikTok. But the discourse around the reblog versus like thing that I've seen is this idea that because a lot of the new users are used to being on social media where liking is kind of your main interaction with the with the post that the ratio of liking to reblogs has really like gone the other way balance wise where people are getting like thousands and thousands and thousands of likes and not as many reblogs and reblogs are basically the only way that anybody sees anything right because tumblr doesn't function off of like a soul-sucking algorithm in the same way that tiktok does (laughs) and so you only see stuff in your in your dash really that's i mean like tumblr does say like based on your likes you might like this but those posts are few and far between and mostly you're seeing stuff that's being reblogged by people you follow and so there have been a lot of i've seen a lot of like gift makers and a lot of artists frustrated that people are liking their art and gifts but not re- reblogging them because then they're not really you know being disseminated outwards to the wider tumblr community so reblog posts it's good for it's good for the fandom ecosystem that's my little soapbox yeah. now i'm gonna get off down it <laughs> That makes a lot of sense to me. And I get when you come from another platform, if you're less familiar with Tumblr and you're more familiar with Twitter, for example, I wouldn't want to retweet more than like a few things a day. Like, I, you know, I wouldn't want to go too overboard with it. Same thing on Instagram. You know, people will post one one grid post a day, maybe. And so, you know, mm-hmm, I definitely mm-hmm. and yeah, there's like the Instagram story kind of reshare. A smaller posting volume is a lot more common on other social platforms. And I think on Tumblr, it's really common and, you know, a big part of the Mm -hmm. platform to have a higher volume of like reblogs, if not, you know, the things that that you're posting yourselves. Um, Like curators are such a, curators on Tumblr is one of the biggest communities on the platform, people curating all these things. And actually one of the things I say when people, when I'm working with partners or, you know, someone's joining Tumblr and they say, what's your advice? How should I post? You know, what kind of content will do the best, blah, blah, blah. I say, if it is something that you would want to reblog and share onto your own Tumblr, then it is something you should post. Mm. I have been noticing that because I always do check like the the proportion of likes to reblogs and it really kind of clicks into place. Um, so yeah, folks on Tumblr, reblog away. If, if someone who follows you sees that you reblogged 100 things, you know what they're going to think? Great. That is amazing. I'm so excited to see that this person shared 100 things that I could read. You know, like that is the joy of Tumblr. Even like as Lauren was saying earlier, as you are saying earlier, you like to see every single post that has, you know, come across your dashboard to the point where you'll, you know, go back for, you know, over a week and get behind just to make sure you've seen everything. And I feel like that is just a really special way that people engage on Tumblr. Uh, and yeah, we are the home of the reblogs. That's what our our like tips blog, Hellside High says. It, we set it up like a little, you know, one of those signs outside of a high school and it says home of the reblog. Yeah. Well, and like something that, that happens a lot to me and, and I think happens to a lot of people who are sort of within fandom communities is that like you'll reblog something, all of your mutuals from that fandom community will also reblog it. And so you are seeing like the same gift set a hundred times on your dashboard. But what's fun is that you get to see the way people tag it, what they say in the tags. You get to see the way all your mutuals react. It really is, oh, I'm just getting so, such warm and fuzzy feelings about Tumblr because it's just so great. <laughs> I, I absolutely am too. Like it's, it feels like, yeah, everyone's kind of having this like asynchronous conversation with each other about 100 different topics, but all at the same time. Yes. Our next Tumblr term is shoelaces. Um, this is something we've said on on this podcast a couple of times. It's something that's referenced in our podcast description and in our uh, show art. And also it's the code for some of our affiliate sponsors <laughs> because shoelaces is essentially one of Tumblr's oldest and most prolific in-jokes, I would say. So basically back in a particular sort of Tumblr heyday of sort of, I would say like the sort of the super hulock heyday of 2011 to 2014, kind of that that whole time. Someone posted 
um, if if I see any of you in public, the code to recognize, you know, a Tumblr person out in the wild is I like your shoelaces. And Cherokee, if I were to say to you, I like your shoelaces, what would you respond with? Thanks. I stole them from the president. And that's how you know that you're talking to somebody who's in the know on Tumblr. <laughs> And it's now become, it kind of, this post has gone through a couple of different responses, I guess, on on Tumblr. Like, when it was initially posted, it was received very, very earnestly um, it, because this was sort of peak, like, earnest cringe Tumblr. And I don't mean that in a negative way. And then after DashCon, which is a thing we will talk about, <laughs> there was sort of this, I guess, judgment of posts like that and, and the cringiness of them. And now I think it's kind of come back around where we recognize that it's cringe, but... I am cringe and I am free, right? Like being cringy <laughs> is not necessarily bad. Um, and now it's sort of, I think, back to being earnestly beloved and kind of like, oh, remember those times way. So yeah, the, yeah. the password is shoelaces. I crave that cringe. <laughs> I crave that cringe. Yes. <laughs> okay. So up next, we have ships and shipping. So this is, if we've talked about, you know, this term probably multiple times in this episode, definitely already multiple times uh, in the few episodes we've done, shipping is a really key way that fans on Tumblr talk about and engage with the fandoms in which they are in. Uh, it is essentially deciding that that two characters or more uh, should be in a relationship. And it is largely romantic, but it is not exclusively romantic. It is, you know, just as we said that bro TP is we want, you know, these people to be friends platonically. So shipping, the most uh, famous ship uh, that we definitely have said quite a few times this episode even is uh, Destiel, Dean and Castiel from Supernatural. And so, of course, you know, it's usually and most often a combination of, of the characters or people's names, but not always, you know, there's there's a good there's a good mix. So yeah, anything else you want to add? I was going to ask if you knew the origins of this of this term. Relationshipping is kind of like my assumption. So you're absolutely right. It was from relationshipping, right? That's obviously where the where the term comes from. But it was specifically the X-Files fandom in the 90s about Mulder and Scully. And shipping obviously as a practice within fandom goes back, you know, much further. I think probably the the big biggest example that's pointed to in shipping culture as kind of a proto-ship, I guess, before the word shipping was even in common parlance, was Spock and Kirk from Star Trek back in the 70s. And I think that that's essentially where the term slash comes from, character slash character, you know, Kirk slash Spock. Oh my gosh. I What a like key piece of internet lore that I just learned. Thank you very much for that. And that is... I just love that it happened with the X-Files, not just because, I mean, Mulder and Scully. Ultimate ship. Soulmates. Yeah. You know, ultimate ship, but also the X-Files, Mulder, X, Scully, Mulder, X, Reader, Scully, X, Reader. I mean, there's that just a lot of... so galaxy-brained of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> our, our last dictionary term is shitpost, which is a term that's also used um, in lots of other places on the internet, but it's still heavily in use on Tumblr. And and Cherokee, correct me if I'm if my definition of this is off, but it's basically like a somewhat like chaotic, goofy, maybe meme based, maybe like slightly trolling post. So it's not necessarily meant in any kind of earnest seriousness. It's usually um, relying on some sort of like chaotic energy or like random humor. Um, this also used to be called uh, night blogging, <laughs> and that 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 is uh, our fan dictionary. Um, and now we're gonna do a slight addition to the fan dictionary, which mm. is we both Cherokee and I brought some terms for each other that we thought maybe the other person wouldn't know, and we're going to try and quiz each other on those definitions. I'm gonna I'm gonna start actually because I've got a little bit of a a, a yeah. slight quiz for you, I guess. I'm excited. Very minor quiz. Let's do it. So which of these is a term for a beloved character? So like a, 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 ter a term a la Blorbo, right? Okay, there's three terms. Which is the correct term for a beloved character? Glup Shitto, Scrimblo Blimblo, or Pooch Magoo? I think it's Glup Shitto. It is not. So Glup Shitto is a real thing. Okay, so out of these three terms, Pooch Magoo is one that I made up 10 before. 10 I, before. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Pooch Magoo. 
Sounds like a cartoon dog. <laughs> I was like trying to think of like, you know, something oh in this God. genre of name. And unfortunately, all of the other combinations of letters Tumblr has already achieved. So Glockshitto <laughs> was one of the words that actually was going to bring to you to see if you knew or not. Because this is a real Tumblr term. I thought I, I know of it. A beloved but like imperfect I feel like is a really nice way of saying it kind of character like it's like they're kind of like a like a shithead essentially but you love them anyway honestly it could have it could have transformed into that so there's like this whole genre of uh scrimblo blimbo terms like scrungly scrunkly scr- scrumbly blumbly like there's just like scrunkly was one of the ones on my list <laughs> by the way <laughs> incredible so scrimblo Blim- blimbo is beloved character um and it's a, a term that i saw that sort of related to the scrunkly thing so yeah give me that definition of scrunkly so a <laughs> Uh, and this is from, yeah, Yugsley, yugsley.tumblr.com. Excellent. And uh, the, someone submitted a question, ask, and said, what is a scrunkly? Please, I keep seeing it everywhere, and now you're using it too. And uh, our friend Yugsley said, yes, I have been trying to be hip with the internet slangs lately. Uh, a scrunkly is just a character you care deeply for, someone you find cute in a funny way, especially when they're little or funky looking. Just a scrunkly scrunkly. Just a scrambly, scrambly. So, 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 so scrambly blimbo is is sort of the the I guess cousin of that, and uh, glup shitto is actually just from a a post of someone saying, anytime Star Wars fans get excited about something, a new character that that character is always named something like glup shitto. Just a little scrambly, scrambly, scrambly blimbo, glup shitto. You know, just as Exa- one does. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, hit me with another term. <laughs> okay. So I have four terms for you. Okay. And the first one is, it's it's a phrase, but I don't know if you will have heard it before. So I would love to know if you've heard it, what you think of it. And also one of the four phrases I'm going to give you, or like words or phrases that I'm going to give you is fake. Ooh, okay. So this one is Blorbo from my notes. Presumably that is referring to somebody who reblogged something of yours or applied to something of yours. And it is the like, person in your notes like in your notifications that you're responding to uh so i saw i think it's kind of like that i think it okay. absolutely can be that i saw like a post about it and then i looked up i looked up the tag and saw that a lot of people were using it and essentially the way that this like person framed it in their post let's let's you know give it up for the people who you see reblogging all your stuff they might not be replying to it or like directly talking to you but you know they're always they're always reblogging or liking your stuff they're the blurbo from your notes so i will i will throw another one at you this is another recent one which is ebdb so ebdb is funny because i also had ebdb on on my on my list for you nice <laughs> it is essentially like a, like the sound a robot makes so that's kind of how it started was like people were saying like ebdb and now it's just kind of like a tag for like the sound you're making associated with a post so i think that that is one definition because it does come from this comic panel of a robot saying ebdb or something yeah like this original this is another post i'll have to find but it now, at least in the in the usage I've seen, it sort of means sending somebody to a bad place. Okay, it's interesting because I don't think I've seen that one before. I think my first encounter with it was, you know, that um that old anti pirating commercial of like you wouldn't download a car <laughs> that gets me yes. a lot on Tumblr. Yeah, so somebody did that and said you wouldn't EBDB a Blorbo, <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else responded with like. I totally get what you're saying, but they did, in fact, send Castiel to super hell. <laughs> and it's like, it's this idea of, like, you EBDB somebody and you send them to hell or somewhere else. All right. The next one is Tagamemnon. <laughs> I really want this to be real, but I don't think it is. Lauren, it absolutely is. <laughs> <laughs> it is a tag commonly used to post about ancient Greek and Roman memes specifically, or like mo- ancient Greek and Rona- Roman like culture. Tagamem- that is incredible. I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> All right. My final term is a throwback that you may or may not be familiar with. I think there's a, there's a sort of a 60-40 shot here. Kin or kinning. 
you know when your brain is like you know this and you need an example of it but because I, I like feel like people often say they're like vampire kin or like related to like they feel like they're part of a community or a thing or they kin the fairy kind of communities kin or of relation to a community or space in or outside of fandom that i mean that yeah that's that's basically it yeah and the and the two examples you use vampire kin fairy kin were very very big kin, the kinning community used to be pretty large on tumblr and there was everything from like vampire kin to plant kin to other kin the plant kin thing actually was i think a, a troll but for a while when it initially was on tumblr it was like a very kind of it was a little bit unclear whether it was like role playing or people like genuinely believing that they were like a vampire in a previous life. Like there was a little bit of a mix of of two, you know, in that way that like yeah. when you're 12 and you're sort of like imagination play and you kind know of like larping a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it was, you know, it was kind of a strange time on Tumblr because I think that there were lots of different perceptions of what the commun- kinning community was. There was lots of differences within the kin- kinning community. Now I see it used much more frequently to basically say, like, I relate to that character. Like, oh, I totally can, oh, yeah. you know, Ed Baldwin from For All Mankind. I don't know why I chose that <laughs> that particular person. Okay, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically just like, oh, I, I see myself in that character or I am I'm totally, you know, um, Robin Kin from, from Stranger Things. Like that kind of thing. I have two more for you. So do you want me to read you both of them and then you can tell me which one you think is fake? Yeah, I think that's the best way to do this for yeah. sure. All right. So for the final two, the two one we, the two words we have are Hanselcore and Blorbiscon. <laughs> oh god, I have no idea. Hanselcore or Blorbiscon? Yep. Hansel core sounds like it's like an aesthetic for Hansel and Gretel. Just based on like the, the, the you know, aesthetic convention, I'm going to say Hansel core is real. It is not. It is not. What the fuck is Blorbiscon? <laughs> Blorbiscon was a, so I found Blorbiscon and Tagamemnon in the same kind of cluster family of tags. Oh my God. Uh, so Blorbiscon was a fake classics meme conference. It happened, I think, earlier this year, like late last year. The user who posted this kind of announced BlorbisCon was Nathaniel the Curious. And uh, the name of this was Blorbin and Tumbleresian Studies in the 21st Century. Um, so this it was on January 23rd, 2022. They said they were accepting ad- abstracts for the conference. And it was hosted by the Tumblr University Faculty of Classics. And it was literally, it appears like a full-on remote convention and if you look up at the Blorbis tag like I can't tell if it actually happened or if people cosplayed going to this virtual event but like so one of the posts is like the bacchanalia in the ball pit (laughs) tumblr is an inherently cat cat catabatic experience because you're scrolling down like I don't know what half of this stuff means but it like it seems like people who are really actually into academia because I saw a lot of the posts saying as someone who really loves classics academia but has missed conventions, BlorbisCon felt like having that academic community again. So if you haven't explored BlorbisCon, folks, we will reblog that announcement. And I highly recommend you, you know, st- take some time to study the Tumblr classics. Yeah, yeah. You know, really get an education. That is amazing. Oh, my gosh, BlorbisCon. If you attended BlorbisCon either virtually or if this was somehow in person, like, please reach out to us. And also, that's a great niche niche fandom thing, again, that you've brought to us, which is amazing. And there were mugs made. I'm, I'm going to share you. I'm sharing you one right now. The BlorbisCon 2022, like, mugs. Oh, my God. I survived BlorbisCon 2022 is what they say. <laughs> There's faculty. I mean, I love this website. Seriously. And if you would like more niche fandoms from from Cherokee's corner of niche fandoms, last episode, a sidebar about drama and the Barbie fandom came up and it is available on our Patreon. If you want to become a patron, you can hear Cherokee explain Barbie fandom drama to me and it's phenomenal. Yeah, you can't miss it. Can't. <laughs> you really, you really can't. <laughs> And with that, we will take a quick break, and then we will be back for Feels Corner. Hello, Hellsiders. It's me again. Thank you so much for listening to Dashboard Diaries. 
If you want to know more about the show, see the posts we're talking about in the episode, or get transcripts, be sure to check out dashboarddiaries.tumblr.com. We're also on Twitter at Dash Diaries Pod if, like us, you're on all the social media. We're a small team right now. Our art is by the amazing Shay McMullen, transcripts by Laudable, editing and music by me, and the wonderful Brandon Grugel mixed and mastered our theme to really make it shine. But we have so many hopes for the future. So if you want to support the show, get ad-free episodes, get bonus clips, etc., go check out patreon.com slash dashboard diaries. Or support us by giving us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and telling your friends to listen. And now for a word from our sponsor. Scrolling through my Tumblr dash always make me pick up a million hobbies. Crafting, drawing, writing, you name it. I've tried my hand at a bunch of them through the years, but the one that stuck the most is cocktail making. I love it. I love learning all about different spirits, different ways flavors balance each other, and trying new recipes. But investing in a million different ingredients when I'm not sure if I'll like a new cocktail is risky. Which is why I love Shaker and Spoon, a subscription cocktail service that helps you learn how to make handcrafted cocktails right at home. Every box comes with enough ingredients to make three different cocktail recipes, developed by world-class mixologists. All you need to do is buy one bottle of that month's spirit, and you have all you need to make 12 drinks at home. At just $40 to $50 per month, plus the cost of the bottle, this is a super cost-effective way to enjoy craft cocktails. And you can skip or cancel boxes at any time. So invite some friends over, class up your nightcaps, or be the best house guest of all time with your Shaker and Spoon box. Get $20 off your first box at shakerandspoon.com slash diaries. And now our last segment as it is this week and every week, the feels corner. Cherokee, what has you in your feels this week? Uh, So I know I mentioned earlier, but I am deep into the alone feels. I oh, am very yeah. into this show and uh, the, the final three are coming up. So I like I am actually again, I want to make sure I know I I've been calling him Moss Guy, which is so my my feels this week is <laughs> Moss Guy, who is a guy who is in the final three of Alone Season 9. And he, one of his main food groups has been like potfuls of moss. And I just I really uh, I really respect that uh, that dedication. Incredible. The, the Moss Guy on Season 9 of Alone is definitely in my feels this week. And I actually started watching Paper Girls which just came out this week too. Oh. I watched a few episodes this week uh, and I'm really enjoying it. And so the plot of Paper Girls, it's a new prime video show. And essentially the plot of it is there's like four girls in 1988. Um, they're around 12 and they're out on their paper route and some, you know, insane time traveling intergalactic war happens as one does. And they get transported mm-hmm. to 2019 and like run into their current selves and have to that team up with their current selves to stop the end of the world. Uh, it's That's really awesome. entertaining and I'm very much enjoying it. How, uh, how about you? How, what are you in your feels about this week? The thing that I'm in, in my feels on this week, well, so two things. I've been watching Loot on Apple TV, another great Apple TV show, Maya Rudolph playing basically Jeff Bezos' ex-wife. Like it's that, it's essentially that story. And there is a ship in that show that is just like a very sweet classic sitcom ship where like they're looking at each other in cute ways and it's very clear that they're eventually going to get together. But, you know, there's all of these things kind of getting in the way. And just every time that they're on screen, I keep yelling kiss loudly at the television. So that's been really fun. And then I've also been playing Outer Wilds, which is a space exploration game, essentially. Um, That's as much as I'll say about it without spoiling anything. But it recently came out on PS5 and um, I downloaded it and it's just like, it's so, it's just a beautifully made game. And I'm like so invested in the story of exploring this, this galaxy. And uh, it's really just, it's, it's the perfect follow up to Stray, which I also really loved. Um, so that's what's giving me feels this but week. On the uh, on the topic of loot, I feel exactly the same way about exactly that ship. And also, yes. there what a beautiful bro TP uh, in oh, in loot incredible. as well. I just I love. I'm now the names of the characters are escaping me, but I can say that it's uh, no spoilers. But there is just a beautiful friendship on this show that is so tender and so like I don't know they're learning each other's boundaries and learning how to relate to each other and it's just really beautiful and sweet and just you know warms warms your heart to see 
Yeah, if you like the trope of the sunshine one with the grumpy one, it is that exact friendship. It's so great. And um, I'm forgetting the actor's name, but the guy who plays Howard, it just his line deliveries just have me howling. He's so funny. And if you have feels, um, please send them to us in a voice memo of 30 seconds or less to dashboarddiariespod at gmail.com and stick around to the end of the show for one of our listeners' feels this week. And with that, I'm Lauren Chippen, and you can find me at thelaurenchippen.tumblr.com. And I'm Cherokee McAnally. You can find me at chero.tumblr.com. And this has been Dashboard Diaries. And may your anons always be loving. Your dash always refreshed. Your gifts always be loading. And your ships always canon. May the fix to reading always be finished. And the answers you seek always in the reblogs. Thanks for scrolling with us. Hello, greetings from Germany. My name is Pia and I am currently obsessed with the third campaign of Critical Role. At the moment of me recording this, there is a very big cliffhanger that won't be resolved for another week and it's just driving me crazy. And what's driving me and everyone else insane as well are these two characters that seem to think that they are just friends while being totally romantically entangled. They just don't know it yet. Everyone is just waiting for them to become their new favorite queer couple ever. The feels are totally real, you guys. Thank you.